Hey guys! So, as you can tell by my face, we're gonna do a makeup transformation of a creepy masked person inspired by a Mad Max makeup of Immortan Joe, who is one of the greatest villains in one of my all time favorite movies this year. Of course, of all the people in this amazing, outrageous, inspiring, energetic, suspenseful movie, I choose one of the ugliest, creepiest people in the movie to do a makeup of. If you haven't seen this movie, I would definitely go see it just for the female empowerment and the amazing makeup and the awesome energy that's put in it. So let's see if we could do the makeup of Immortan Joe. I can't wait to see how it turns out. First of all, of course, I'm going to get my hair out of the way and put it in a wig cap with some hairspray to pull back all of my baby hairs. I've got like a bajillion of them, it seems like. And don't worry, I'm not completely naked while doing this. I have a wrap on because we're going to do a huge body painting. You don't need to put on a wig for this look, but I wanted to make it really realistic to the character. I took the wig I had from my Elsa Frozen video and just cut it and made these huge receding hairlines, which I love love. And to make sure that this wig is really secured onto my forehead, I'm going to glue it down with some telesis. If you don't have telesis, you could definitely use spirit gum. I feel and look a little bit like an elven king from Lord of the Rings mixed with Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Then to start off with the mask part of this makeup, I am getting some aqua paint that is white with a semi-smaller paintbrush and painting on the very edge of that mask across the bridge of our nose and our cheeks and then doing it on the tip of our nose down to our cupid's bow at the top of our lip and across making more marks on our cheeks for the bottom part of that mask. We are painting on this white base first that we're gonna layer on the silver parts of the mask later. Reference pictures are one of the most important things for body painting and makeup looks that are this detailed. This is probably gonna be one of the most detailed detailed makeups I have ever done on my channel and in my life. And then you are also going to do a white base portion on your chin as well, doing in sweeping upward motions towards your lip. Then you're going to get the brown aqua paint and do certain parts of the face that is going to be this beautiful bronze color that is on the Immortan Joe mask. You're going to do some parts darker than the others because that is going to be more intensely mixed with black and the lighter parts are going to be more bronze and beautiful and show more detail. Then getting a very tiny paintbrush with some yellow aqua paint, doing it in a very thick type pigmented consistency that's easy enough to glide onto your lips. We are doing the shapes of the teeth. Morton Joe has such great yellow dingy pieces of teeth on this mask that he wears in the movie. It kind of reminds me of the ancient skulls that you would see in a tomb. The top ones are very long and jagged and then there are more smaller stubs of teeth at the bottom. Now to get one of my very favorite eyeshadow palettes to layer on with body painting or fantasy makeup work, this is the Crown Brushed Fuego palette. Using the silver tone with it with the eyeshadow brush and patting that on top of the white parts of the mask. And then with the brown tones, we are going to layer on top a bronzed brown shadow from the Fuego palette. You don't have to have this palette. Whatever silver or bronze eyeshadow that you own is perfectly fine. And you want to do some over that chin area of the silver. You also want to pat on some bronze shadow on top of the teeth that we painted on. And also get that silver eyeshadow and put it in the areas that are the ends of the hoses. There are these parts that look like sockets where the hose of this mask is connected to. And that is going to be silver. And then on the brown part of the hose, we're going to do some more bronze. Now getting one of my all-time favorite products to use for special effects makeup, body painting, fantasy makeup, beauty, and just everything. The most versatile thing is black matte eyeshadow. I'm getting it with a very thin push liner brush and doing details on the mask. You want to look at your face while painting this like an actual art piece that you paint with your hands, brushes, and paper. If anybody has a background in art, body painting may just be one of your favorite things you ever do. Now getting this black eyeliner from Tarte, you can use any black eyeliner you want. This one was just the most pigmented one I had. I am filling in the middle part of the nose section of this mask on the tip of my nose where it looks kind of like nasal bone in an actual skull. Going back with that matte black eyeshadow and the pencil brush for this to do more shadowing in finer point areas and details there. Getting that black eyeliner and doing very tiny little dots of circles that are going to be the bolts 
to make it look like real silver hardware on the top of this mask. This pencil brush with the black matte eyeshadow is also great for the shading around those ends of the hoses that go into the mask that we did of that silver color and on the sides of the mask. And then we're gonna get that black eyeliner and do the outlines of the teeth. Like I said, you want these teeth very jagged. The more detail and steady and more time you take out this whole makeup, the better it's going to turn out. And with that eyeliner, you're also gonna do some ribbed texture on the hoses of the mask. With that black matte eyeshadow and the pencil brush, again, this is probably my favorite part is doing shading with black eyeshadow on top of body paint pieces. This is just gonna give so much more a dimension and texture, especially around those hoses that come out from this mask. This is just the top part of it and we're gonna do way more of it later. Just make sure that it doesn't have too much black and you can still see some color showing through. Got some yellow shadow and pat it a little bit on this side of my mask. You get that black eyeliner and do more details on the very thick black parts. Now it's time for the wrinkle effect. Can we call it that, the wrinkle effect? Getting some white body paint and doing a highlight mark above the nose piece of your mask because it goes higher and has more of a white cast from the lighting on your mask and on the side a little bit. Going back with the highlighting on my face, I am getting a cream corrector palette. This is one of my favorites. It's the Poise HD Creams. You can always use Ben Nye or any type of cream makeup that has a highlight and contour color. Especially for this one, you also need an orange color. But we're still going to start off with that highlight color to do the old age type makeup where you do frown lines and then you blend it out. Then I'm getting my contour color. You want something that's brown, a little bit darker than your skin tone, and a little bit ashy to do some contouring under the highlight marks. This is gonna make your face and the frown marks around the bridge of your nose and the crow's feet stand out and look like you're really turning into a much older man with blonde hair. Make sure you alternate with a clean brush to buff out any harsh edges. Now getting an orange tone cream color, what I was kind of talking about earlier, and doing feather-like motions where his eyebrows would be. Then getting that ashy brown color that we use to contour and mixing it with that, this is gonna give more of a realistic blonde tone hair color for very bushy, manly eyebrows. Then I'm getting some baby powder. It's one of my favorite things for setting any type of makeup and body paint. I'm getting that with a giant fluffy powder brush and patting that very thickly all over my face because my favorite part about Immortan Joe is that he has this very caked on powdery face. Getting the matte black eyeshadow, and now it's time to do his smoky eye effect. No, we are doing some very thick shadows under his eye, but more of a contour shadow where it's gonna be thicker right below those eyebrows that we painted on, and more smoked out lighter in the middle center of his eyelid and towards the bottom to top off right above where the line of that mask is. And then we're gonna get this dusty, rusty red color from our Fuego palette. I love this eyeshadow combo. It kind of makes me want to do my own beauty makeup of it. If I were to name this eyeshadow look, it probably would be Burnt Out Blood of Thy Enemies. It's like this bloody, rusty red with black. I hope that's what Immortan Joe was going for. With some bronze shadow mix in there because it's a little bit light, with some more matte black eyeshadow a little bit. We are just bringing it up on the sides of our temples in the side bottoms of that mask on our cheeks. Getting that contour color and making sure that we are doing details on the cheeks and around our eyes. Making sure all that contour on her face is on point. Making sure Morton Joe's eyebrows are on fleek. Getting that matte black eyeshadow very lightly with a fluffy eyeshadow brush and doing these dirty contour marks and on his receding hairline. This receding hairline is so major, I actually contemplated whether I should shave back my own natural hairline a little bit just to make it stand out a little bit more. But let's not do that, because what if it doesn't grow back and I will cry for the rest of my life? With that matte black eyeshadow, I'm just making sure that the shading on my eyes are perfect and to the T, just like the reference picture, which you want to keep referring back to. Getting that white body paint and fixing any mistakes on the mask of the highlight parts that we think we did, which I know I did. Now that we think our face details are looking pretty darn good, I'm going to get that brown body paint and start painting on 
those three-dimensional in real life hoses that are coming off of Immortem Joe's mask. I know this is gonna look very sloppy and like you just took something really gross and chocolatey but that isn't chocolate and smeared it down your neck and onto your chest. And you're gonna get that brown color very lightly with the paintbrush and do other areas lighter than the actual hose marks and then get some yellow and do a light golden yellow type collar around it. Getting the matte black eyeshadow and fixing some parts on the mask I think need more detail because I'm going to bring that down in these crazy looking lines of the details of the hose on the body portion of this makeup that are coming out of the mask and onto our chest that are his like breathing tubes in this futuristic awesome movie called Mad Max. Getting the black matte eyeshadow again with a fluffier eyeshadow brush and doing contour shading colors on the hose part. With that push liner brush and doing the jagged marks and connecting the little scrunchy hose pieces of it. With the fluffy eyeshadow brush again with the black matte eyeshadow, I'm just coloring in different parts of that lighter brown body paint we did on our neck and then doing more hose marks with the push liner brush and then got that brown body paint again because I think the hose on this side is a little bit more U-shaped and thicker in certain parts. So now it's time to finish those rugged edges of the hose with some matte black eyeshadow and the push liner brush and doing detail of shadow with a fluffier eyeshadow brush again around the hose on the yellow parts of that collar and our neck and shoulders. Then we're gonna transfer over to the black body paint with a very big paintbrush. All the areas that are showing skin still. This is gonna act like great shadow to frame out all the artwork you just did on your chest and on your face. If you have a black background, it's gonna look magical. And I know this is a little excessive, but I'm also painting in my ears black. Make sure you don't paint all that blonde hair in just your ears, cause you could easily make that mistake. And once you adjust your wig, or you don't have to have a wig if you did this, you know me, I just wanna be as realistic as I can. We are completely done with this makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed this makeup as much as I had making it. This is literally the most fun I've ever had doing a makeup video. I can't believe I could have any more fun, but I absolutely love this movie. I've wanted to do this for so long. I'm so sorry for everyone who has had to wait for this because I've been talking about it for a while. It had to happen. I'm a huge fan of this movie. This villain was so fun. But now it's time to take this off. What I would like to know is if you could transform to any other gender of a person for a day, who would it be? I love transforming into a man sometimes for these videos and makeups. If that's weird, I don't care. After doing this video and thinking about it, wearing this gorgeous locks of hair with the receding hairline, that was kind of weird, but very fun. I would have to choose the Elven King from The Hobbit, Thandral, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, played by Lee Pace himself, gorgeousness. I wanna ride on reindeer and have gorgeous hair. Yes, please. Again, taking this off was a very long task. Don't worry, I only use baby wipes, and then I go take a shower after this. But I did find this new product by Lush that helps take off body makeup very well, and it's called Sandstone Soap. Taking off that telesis was no easy task because it's a medical grade glue, so I had to use isopropyl myristate, the most hard to pronounce and disgusting feeling on your skin because it's literally like pouring oil down your face. Just don't get in your eye. But I'm loving this dirty G.I. Jane type look after I wipe off almost not entirely all of my body paint makeup. It gives a very its own messy natural smoky eye. I'm totally kidding. But thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all in more videos soon. I'm so completely sorry if this video took a while to post on my channel and if there's been breaks in between my videos. But I have to announce I did have a death in my family, but everything will be fine. Thank you all for your support, especially on Instagram. You guys are my everything, and I can't thank you enough. And I love you all, and I very much hope to see you soon. Bye.